Born July 1st, 1899. I don't remember a whole lot about it, but I guess my parents were pretty pleased to see me. They decided to name me after my father. So I'm Henry Walton Jones Jr. I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey at an exciting time. The very beginning of the 20th century. I started to walk at a pretty early age. Everyone in the house got pretty excited about it. I'm not sure why, but I've always wanted to see what was out there over the next hill. I like exploring. Look what we have for you. At an early age, I met my very best friend in life. You know how it is when you really like someone the first time you ever meet them? I mean, really like them. Well, that's how it was with me in Indiana. We were buddies straight up. My dad teaches at Princeton. He's a professor of medieval studies and a very smart man. He wrote a book about chivalry. My mother adores him. She's the sweetest, smartest, most wonderful woman who ever lived. I'm not crazy about school. It's not so much that I don't like the lessons. I just hate sitting still the whole time. It's more fun with Indiana, and I learn a whole lot more. Like how far a ball can travel, how to beat gravity. If that balloon hadn't sprung a leak, Indiana would have been the first dog on the moon. But then I guess he would have been pretty lonely up there all by himself. One time we set out to break the land speed record. Round about here I learned something really important. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, always keep a sharp lookout behind you. I'll never forget when I discovered how electricity works. Indiana was a great help. One night, father and mother came into my room. And what he said changed my life. Listen carefully, Junior. Darling, we're going on a journey around the world. <laughs> His new book was such a big success that he'd gotten invitations to speak at all kinds of schools and universities. So Princeton had given him a leave of absence. The only sad thing was saying goodbye to Indiana. We boarded a giant steamship and sailed across the Atlantic Ocean. Our first stop was England, where we visited London, and then went on to Oxford, where my father had gone to university. He said he had a surprise for me. Huh, some surprise. You think your teacher's tough? Let me tell you. She's a pussycat compared with Miss Helen Seymour. Tudor Supreme. Stand up straight, Henry, dear. Young man, how old are you? Nine. And are you anxious to learn? Depends. Depends? Depends? On what? On what's being taught. You may go. I'm sorry, it's impossible. He's far too young. Your son needs a governess. I'm not a governess. I am a teacher. You're the best there is. That's why he needs you. Dear Professor Jones, he is a child. And I'm used to teaching young gentlemen twice his age. It's quite out of the question. I hate her. She's a witch. Shh. Darling, listen. Miss Seymour is very highly regarded in academic circles. She tutored your father when he was at Oxford. He thinks a great deal of her. Then let him go with her and we can go back home. Which seemed pretty much like the end of it. Or so I thought. And like I said, my father was a very smart man. I know how much you've always wanted to travel. It's the chance of a lifetime. Don't say you're going to turn your back on it. I'm sorry, Professor Jones, but I won't go a single mile with that boy. 
Not even to see the Great Wall of China. The gardens of Kyoto. The Taj Mahal by moonlight. Sunset over the pyramids. It took nine days to sail across the Mediterranean Sea. I guess my mother and father had quite a good time on the voyage. I didn't get to see too much of it, though. Miss Seymour didn't let up on me for one bit of a minute. Math, literature, history. It was like nothing could stop her. Not even the ocean. Weather, Captain. A bit lively, Bishop. I hope it's not spoiling your enjoyment of the voyage. No, no, not at all. We British are a hardy island breed, what? <laughs> well, young fellow, how are your studies progressing? I wonder about mummies, sir. Mummies? Yes, sir. About how the ancient Egyptians turned people into mummies when they died. Really? How did they go about that? Well, first they scooped out the brain. They took it out through the nose. Of course, they had to break it first. Here, they used a metal hook and kind of teased it out. Excuse me. They took a stone knife, cut open the left side of the corpse, reached in, pulled out all the lower organs. They put them in four separate jars. One for the liver, one for the lungs, one for the stomach, and one for the intestines. They tied on the toenails and the fingernails with string. So they wouldn't fall off. They plugged up the nose and you know, stuck little bits of cloth under the eyelids. And this is really interesting. Sometimes they use little onions instead. That completed the first stage, sir. The embalming. Then they had to wrap the whole body in bandages. Didn't always work, though. Most often the mummies leaked. I believe that I'm wanted on the bridge. That was an interesting speech, Junior. Thank you, Father. Now, eat your tripe. <laughs> we landed at Alexandria and then made our way up the Nile River to the ancient city of Cairo. I had never seen anything like it. Everything was so wonderful, strange, and exotic. As soon as we had settled in, my father started his lectures at Cairo University. Mother was busy helping him out on the social side with afternoon teas and things. So I was left to the tender mercies of a wicked witch. <laughs> From time to time, I was able to explore things on my own, but for the most part, the goddess of knowledge kept my nose stuck in a book. Have you finished? Almost. Good. Well, when you're done, we'll take an expedition out to see the monuments. You mean the pyramids? Yes, and the great mysterious Sphinx. Oh, boy.
great Egyptian Sphinx was built around 2500 BC. Wow. Now, why don't we have a real adventure, hmm? And climb one of those pyramids. Why did you only give him ten piastres? Ten piastres are entirely sufficient for his services, Mr. Jones. What do you want in thirty? These people expect to barter. It is part of their nature. You'll see, by the time we get down, he will be perfectly content. Seymour. It's pretty bad to me. Nonsense, Mr. Jones. Now, when was that pyramid built? Over 4,000 years old. By King Chaos. It's one of the largest constructions ever made by man. And one of the seven wonders of the world. Very good. Why can't we climb to the top of the biggest pyramid? I should be more than happy to get to the top of this one, Mr. Jones. Now, let's get on. What do we do? I don't know, Miss Seymour. Do we have to walk? It's much too far. Uh, Besides, it will be dark soon. What if we're attacked by bandits? Oh, nonsense. Or tomb robbers. They're supposed to be real scary. Henry, there's absolutely nothing, nothing to be afraid of. Look! Someone's coming. Hurrah, we're saved. But what if it's a tomb robber? Seymour? Mr. Lawrence! What in heaven's name are you doing here? I've been up in Syria looking at the Crusader castles, and I thought I'd taken a bit of Egypt before going home. Hello. Hi. Mr. Henry Jones, Jr. of Princeton, New Jersey. Mr. T.E. Lawrence of Jesus College, Oxford. How do you do, Mr. Lawrence? Awfully well, thank you. And please call me Ned. I say. You're not related to Professor Henry Jones by any chance? He's my dad. I've read his books. They're brilliant. What happened? We had a slight altercation with our guide. Yeah, he ran off with the camels. Yes, they do that sometimes. Yes, but what on earth shall we do? Well, I'd say gather up some camel dung and make jolly sure we don't catch cold. Time stands still. It has no meaning. When you open a tomb, you let in the light. The first light that place has seen for three or four thousand years. Your feet are the first to tread that floor since the feet of the men who made it. You may even see their footsteps going before you in the dust. You are breathing the same air as the men who laid the mummy to rest. Wow. Sounds great. I'd like to be an archaeologist. Maybe you'll add a new page to history. Or discover a treasure beyond price. And get rich. <laughs> no, Henry. The archaeologists don't get rich. Archaeology doesn't steal from the past. It opens it, so that everyone may learn from its treasures. 
but why did they have all that stuff in the tomb with them? They didn't need it. They were dead. Yes, but they believed that their spirit continued to live in the tomb and come alive again. Really? Really. Is it true? No, Henry, it is not true. But it is what many of the ancient Egyptians believed. Then what does happen when you die? You know very well. You mean if you're good, your soul goes to heaven? With all the angels and stuff? Precisely. But that's the Christian belief. Other people have different answers. Like what? Well, a good Muslim will go to paradise, which according to the Prophet Muhammad is a delightful place, especially if you're a man. A Hindu believes in reincarnation. Reincarnation? What's that? It means that when the body dies, the soul reappears in another body and lives again. And then it moves on again, and so on and so on. The same soul? Yes. But in different bodies? Yes. Where do we come from? Where do we go? It's one of the truly great mysteries. And the spark of most great religions. So, nearly all of them have an answer to what happens when we die. Which one is true? No one's come back to tell us. Mr. Lawrence. Oh, but Henry, if you should meet a mummy one night, you can always ask him. Meet a mummy? And ask him? Yes. When his spirit returns at sunset and enters his shriveled body. When he rises slowly from his dusty coffin and creeps out into the darkness. When he glides across the empty desert where nothing is heard but the cry of And the shuffle of his bony feet across the sand. Shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle. Wow. Mr. Lawrence. Then, if you should chance to meet him, it may be he will answer your question. Oh, but only if you return with him to his tomb. Mr. Lawrence, it's time we went to sleep. Oh, by the way, I'm going upriver tomorrow near the Valley of the Kings. A friend of mine is working on a dig with Howard Carter. Would you like to come? Can we, Miss Seymour? May we? May we? Your father will have to give his permission of it. He will. I know he will. <laughs> May we, father? May we? Please? journal or diary. Write down anything that interests or strikes you. Thank you, Father. And don't neglect your studies, Junior. No, sir. Whoopee! He wants to know what it is you're reading. It's a book about Napoleon. She says I have to read it. Oh, Abiyagra and Hayat Muharibazi. They're wise people, you see. They prize knowledge above all things. Assalamu alaikum, ya boy. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yashgar, inta yashgar. Henry, wherever you go, and whatever countries you visit, learn the language. It's the key that unlocks everything, the most important thing of all.
dear Ned. How positive delightful to see you. Uh, may I introduce Miss Helen Seymour and Mr. Henry Jones, Jr. My dear friend Rashid Salam. Delight. Delight. Welcome to you both. Ned, you're in luck. We discovered a new tomb. A pharaoh? No, well, not a pharaoh, I'm afraid. Still, everything is important, as Mr. Carter always says. Will we get to see inside of it? Well, I do hope so, Mr. Jones. That would be great. Gully! Why are those men sitting idle? They are afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? They say there is a curse on the tomb. A curse? To make people die? Now you know there's no such thing as a curse. That's what the men are saying. Come back to work at once. At once, Mr. Gully. But there could be a curse, couldn't there? Well, of course not. Yalla, yalla, Enzo! Yalla, yalla, Yalla! Demetrios is going to blow up the rock. It'll make a lovely explosion and clear the road to the camp. All clear, Demetrios! Pierre, make sure you get some pictures of these seals. Very good, Mr. Carter. We found these last month pottery, linen, and these clay seals, all 18th dynasty. This one bears the name of the king, Tutankhamun. Ah, the boy pharaoh, Mr. Carter. How old was he? About your age, when he became a pharaoh. Do you think his tomb still exists? I'm certain of it, Mr. Lawrence. And I believe we shall find it, with hard work and a great deal of luck. I have an almost superstitious conviction about it. Not very scientific, I'm afraid. Hey. And the tomb you found yesterday, Mr. Carter? Uh, also 18th dynasty, but alas, not the king's. Uh, his name was Ka. Ka? He seems to be in some kind of architect or engineer. We may know more when we open up his tomb. Will you be the first ones inside of it? Yes. Would you like to come along? Cheapers, creepers. Thanks. <laughs> Workers won't go in because of the curse. Superstition, Mr. Galley. It's only superstition. grave robbers. But since Carr was only an architect, I doubt that we're in much danger. my tomb, I shall burn with my fire. It's the curse. Shh. Rashid, break the seals. Scorched. Oh, Lord. Someone's 
It's been here before us. Tom Roberts. Oh, the curse. Henry. Well, there's only one way to find out. I think so. The door seals were intact. There must be another chamber. Careful, it's a sealed room, remember. by then. Put a guard on tonight, Rashid. Someone you can trust. I'll guard the two myself, sir. Good. I should draw a gun from the armory, just in case. Can I stay in guard with you tonight? That's very brave of you, Mr. Jones. But I'll be all right. Take him to Cairo. There's bound to be an inquiry. I'll go myself this afternoon. Hello. What? Some kind of silver powder. His leg's covered with it. No one's been here. Nothing's touched. Doesn't make sense. Seems to be a motive. Yes, there is. 
He that enters my tomb, I shall burn with my fire. Henry. It's the curse. <laughs> I mean, there's no motive for his death. I can't see any reason. God, it seems so pointless. I know it is common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. He was my friend. I shall miss him dreadfully. You'll see him again, won't you? You'll see him again? In heaven, after you die. <gasps> if Kyle let him go, after he rose from his coffin. After he killed Rashid. Listen, Henry. When I told you all those things about mummies coming alive again and walking the earth, well, I'm afraid I must have... Told lies? Exaggerated. I can't seem to help it. It's something I do. Why? I'm not sure. But I often tell stories. You know, make things up. To make life seem more exciting, more worthwhile. car really looked like. It's beautiful. I was beloved of the Pharaoh. As a reward for my great service, he gave me the precious headpiece. Ah, that must be the one he's wearing, Henry. Sacred jackal with the eyes of fire. Can't be. What? Can't be the headpiece he's wearing. There's no jackal with eyes of fire. You're right. Wait a minute, though. Something was here. It's been broken off. Stolen. At last, we've got a motive. That's probably what it looked like. What did it mean, eyes of fire? The jackal's eyes were precious stones. That's why it was stolen and poor Rashid killed. Only I still don't understand why the mummy disappeared. A native wouldn't do it. It would be sacrilege. Then who? One of the assistants? Pierre? Or someone with a foot in both worlds. Who knew the power of the curse, yet didn't himself believe it. Who needed money and hated Rashid. Mr. Golly, Ned. Are you going to arrest him? We haven't got enough proof yet. We need hard evidence. Ah. I've forgotten all about it. What a fool I am. What is it? The powder I found on Rashid's body. Photographer's flashback.
need your help, old lad. I'm going to search Pierre's tent. Pierre will kill you. He's not there. He's over there, see? Keep your eyes skinned. If he moves, come quick and tell me. Holy smokes. Play up and play the game, eh? Trust me, Ned. Quick, the tomb. What are you doing here? I was taking some photographs to sell to the newspapers. Newspapers? There is much money to be made from such a story. A man must live. There was magnesium powder found on Rashid's body. But I am not the only person in the camp who uses magnesium powder. Demetrius! Look! That museum for making flares. <sighs> he will be at port side by now, ready to go board a ship. Not if I have anything to do with it. He hasn't got the jackal. Mm. 
What is Morocco like, Father? Very old and very mysterious. Not like any place you're used to. It's a very different culture, son. Some of them still own slaves. Really? Gosh, dear, you're getting overly excited. No, but he Quiet, said that... Junior. It's time we were getting on board. Is it true, Seymour? Let's go. Is it true that some of them really still own slaves? Come on, Henry, let's go. Where do they... Oh. And what exactly do slaves do? Let's go. My notebook. I've lost my notebook. My lecture for the Sultan. Oh, thank you, dear. If I'd really lost it, I'd... You'd have worried the whole way to Wetsan. How far is Wetsan from Tangier? Oh, about 75 miles. Now, in Tangier, we should be staying with a friend of mine, Walter Harris. Walter and I were students together. Now he's correspondent for the London Times. In that case, he sounds a thoroughly respectable person. Henry, my dear fellow. Good to see you. May I introduce my wife, Anna? Hello. Uh, Miss Helen Seymour. And my son, Henry Jr. Delighted to meet you all. Well, this way, I have a carriage waiting. How's the crossing? Not too rough, I hope. The training can be awfully unreliable. I've arranged something tomorrow which may interest you. Tea with the Sharifa of Jebel. The Sharifa of Jebel, wasn't she? Emily Keane, quite right, Miss Seymour. Emily Keane is, or I should say was, an English woman. She came over here some years ago. And married a native. Well, it's a bit more than a native. The Sharif was descended from Mohammed. People revered her. She's a remarkable woman. I'm sure you'll like her. Sorry, will not make me presentable for tea. I'd be killed. Tell her. Talk. Talk. How many are in Kuluk? Fearful. I'll tell you where they go. I'll explain. I can't imagine how Emily Keane could give up England for this less civilized country. I think it's very romantic to give up your country for the man you love. Muhammad Rasul Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm. This is beautiful. A far cry from London, but it has its charms. Mr. Harris. Sharifa. May I introduce to you Professor Jones? We are honored to meet you, Sharifa. How do you do? Mrs. Jones? It is always pleasant to meet Americans. Henry uh, Junior. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, Miss Helen Seymour. And of course, a fellow countrywoman. And you know Sheikh Es Sali, the Sultan's emissary. Welcome back to my humble home. Please come in. We will have tea. Yeah. Uh, Junior, leave the lizard outside. Yes, Father. And uh, try and stay out of trouble. Hmm? Yes, Father. The Sharifa introduced English tea to this country, and I, for one, am extremely grateful. <laughs> Mrs. Jones, how do you like our country? Oh, it is fascinating. The religious prejudice is a little unnerving. I'm afraid we were victims of spitting from a less open-minded Muslim than our friend Mr. Es Salih here. 
There are a few zealots, I'm afraid. I'm very sorry. If you don't mind my asking, Sharifa, did the people object when the Sharif married a Christian? Yeah, they objected. But when we married, he told them that if they ignored me, they would be ignoring him. That they could not do, because he was very powerful. So the Mohammedans accepted me, partly because of my husband, but partly, I think, because I did not try to force my views or religion on them. As many Europeans try to do. Perhaps you will allow Omar to take Henry to the garden. They can play there. Oh, if it would be no trouble. Omar. As you bid. Run off some of that mischief, Junior. We have a long trip ahead of us. Yes, sir. Okay, catch. Ah, oh, give one. Mr. Harris and Mr. S. Charlie are for self-rule. What are your feelings, Sharifa? Who better to rule a country than one of its own people? My dear Professor Jones, if you have the ear of the British or the French, please tell them that. <laughs> I do not have the ear of any government. I am simply a professor. Oh, three to zero. You better score or I win. Do you wish me to score? I want to win. As you wish. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to try and score, but you don't have to be all polite and let me win. As you wish. Oh, one to three. Yeah, you speak English pretty good. What'd you learn? School? I do not go to school. We speak English to please the Sharifa. Wait, you don't have to study? You're lucky. As you say. Our country is making headway at its own pace. You must not judge it by English standards. Are the horses ready? Yes, Joshi. Ah, let me guess. For the Sultan? A small bribe to help ensure that my health programs may be continued. You will present it, please. My pleasure. Well, are we all ready? We have many miles to go before nightfall. All set, I believe. It was lovely to spend time with you. We will do it again when you return. <laughs> Henry, it's time for us to go now. Right now? No complaining, young man. Put your jacket on. Will there be anyone in wet sand for me to play with? I don't know, sweetheart. I'm afraid we haven't found many playmates for Henry on our journeys. Oh. Would you like Omar to travel with you to be young Henry's playmate? If he would like to. Omar. You will accompany young Henry to wet sand and be a good companion to him. Prepare for your journey. Don't get too comfortable. Bandits roam these parts, ready to steal anything from a fine horse to a gold tooth. You've got to be on your guard. You know, Omar, this place looks like Egypt. What is Egypt? It's a country. Does not every place look like this? Nope. Switzerland's got mountains and Russia's got snow. I do not know snow. It's what happens to rain when it gets really cold. It kind of falls out of the clouds in little white flakes. Does everyone in Russia catch snow? Well, no. They kind of let it fall on the ground, so... So everywhere you look, you'll see snow. Every place is different, see? Here's a map. A map? Yeah. It's like a picture of the world. See? There's Egypt. There's Russia. I will never see Russia or Egypt. You should try. I had a friend that rode around Egypt on a bicycle. I even went on an archaeological dig with him. I'm going to be an archaeologist when I grow what is Archoist? Archaeologist. 
It's like someone who travels around the world looking for lost civilizations. So what are you going to be when you grow up? A slave. No, no, no. I mean when you grow up. A slave is born into his life. He cannot leave it. <laughs> Henry, dear, you're so quiet. You must be very tired. No, I was just thinking. About what? About Omar. Indy, don't worry about your friend. He's, uh, he's well-treated, well-fed and clothed. If he were a peasant and had to earn his own living, life would be much harsher. He is better off as a slave. I do not believe anyone would trade freedom of choice for a roof over their head, no matter how lovely the roof. You are in a different culture, Miss Seymour. The human spirit remains the same everywhere. Slavery was accepted through most ancient civilizations. Not having slaves is a relatively new idea. What if Omar doesn't want to be a slave? Henry, that is what slavery means. He has no choice. The Sharifa can sell him as she could sell a shoe or a necklace or anything else that belonged to her. That makes him property. He can be stolen. And that brings on what I think is the, the true problem with slavery, the kidnapping. Kidnapping? Bandits kidnap slaves and we sell them in what is a, a thriving, if illegal, trade. Yes, nasty business. Nasty business. Cheapers, uh, no need to ask my permission. Ask anything, anytime. This Russia on your map. Yes. How do you get there? Well, let's see. Um, from here. Well, let's just check the map. Right. From here, you could probably take a boat through the Mediterranean Sea to the Caspian Sea and all the way up to Russia. This is the ocean. Yep. You know, there's more water than land in the world. Who owns the ocean? Why, nobody. And the ocean can take you everywhere. Thank you for answer. Omar, you don't have to bow around me. We're friends. Around me, you're not a slave, okay? Friends. Delivered us safely. My house awaits. Why are there big walls around? To keep the bad guys out. Jeepers, does it work? Oh, no, 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 by no means. Jones, how would you describe that smell? Well, I don't know, really. I've always thought the city smells like incense and dead cats. What do you think? <laughs> oh, that's pretty disgusting. First one there gets a lemonade. Go! Get up! Cool, Junior. <laughs> Giddy up! No. Ah, lemonade. Is that from lemonade, Jones? Indeed. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Lunch the ladies. Welcome. Oh, this is awful. Oh, thank you, dear. to play? Sure. I'm just gonna get signed. I will set up gold between two benches. <laughs> okay. trying to protect my house, Cindy. Mr. Harris, 
I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. You look like an Arab. That's the idea. Ah, gee, it's all right. It's only me. There's no intruder. Just a hungry, thirsty man who would like his biscuits and tea. Omar can help you prepare it. Why are you dressed like that? It's easier to move around the marketplace. An Arab can gather more information than a European. Holy smokes, are you a spy? <laughs> a newspaper man is not really a spy. No, I went to see a Grand Vizier, a minister for the Sultan. Unfortunately, he had offended the Sultan, so now his head is on a stick in the marketplace. He was unable to chat. Jeepers. His head is on a stick? Yes, you see, whenever anyone displeases the Sultan, he cuts their head off, salts it, and then the head is displayed to remind everyone else not to displease the Sultan. So, how exactly do you displease the Sultan? Oh, many ways. So you mean you can just, like, say the wrong thing? It's always advisable to think before you speak. Wow. Just a head and no body, huh? Were its eyes still open? The rock matksha. He stares but sees nothing. Oh, you have a talent for this language. Good for you. Say, so, what is that stuff in your face anyways? It's walnut oil. <laughs> Don't worry. Comes off with lemon juice here. Yeah. So, Will I join you for tea? <laughs> sure. Shall we call the Sultan your highness or your excellency? Well, I believe your highness is acceptable. Henry, now don't go outside the walls of the house. It's not safe. Why? Henry has no time to go exploring. He has three chapters of Latin to study. I'll test you when I return. Yes, Miss Seymour. Mother. Yes, dear? Be very, very careful. You, uh, you wouldn't want to displease the Sultan. Mr. Harris says... Uh... The Sultan is very generous with his foreign visitors. I'm sure there's no worry of displeasing him. Well, enjoy yourself while we're gone. Haji will be here if you need him. Ladies, the professor is anxious to give his lecture. Shall we go? You and Omar can go out and play in the garden after you finish your studies. says the head of a grand vizier's on a stick in the marketplace. Let's go see it. American is not safe in marketplace. I know. I dressed up like an Arab. Mr. Harris does it. He showed me. Even as an Arab, not safe. Many things can happen. Come on, I've never seen a salted head before. I mean, they don't do stuff like that in New Jersey. Because if I don't see it now, I'm never going to get the chance to see one. Come on, don't argue. We're just wasting time. As you bet. I didn't mean it like an order. I want you to want to go. But I do not want to go. Well, don't say that. As you beat. Don't say that anymore. Come on, just let's go. It'll be fun, I promise. I don't worry so much. Marketplace, it is wise not to look into the eyes of anyone. I'm not going to look at anything except the dead head, all right? I promise. I wonder if it's got maggots crawling out of its eyes, or maybe vultures circling it, or maybe its tongue's all swelled up and hanging out of its mouth. Oh, you can't tell me you don't want to see this. I would like to see it. I knew it. I knew it. But we must be careful. If anyone talks to you, answer wrongly. Alar Akbir, Alar Aziz. Uh, Allah's great. Allah's good. In Arabic, not English. Ah, 
كاين كاين على راس بلوزير علاش بغيتي ها وليدي هو عامر كل دمايات عفا عفا يمكن من هنا ايوا شهر لي It is not here and it is late We should be to house before parents and Mr Harris to tell تتقلبوا على راس الوزير الكبير عرفتي فين كاين تبعوني Come on, let's go. It is time to go back. Oof. One quick look. Come on, we're already here. I think the Sultan bettered himself listening to your lecture. He enjoyed it. I think so. Fell asleep for a few moments. Yes, but only a few. That makes it a huge success. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fresh lemonade. Now, that'll hit the spot. What? Henry isn't in his room. Oh, he's probably playing with Omar. I wouldn't be surprised if he were hiding. He knows a Latin exam is on the agenda. <laughs> well, I don't think he'd be hiding. He'd want to hear about the Sultan. Haji, go and check the house and grounds. خرجوا قلبوا انت الفوق لتحت قلبوا هنري 
Harris? Dad. What? Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris! Mr. Harris, the boy is not in house. They must sneak out. Bring my hat and cane. I think I know where they've gone. Where? I'm afraid I made something I saw in the marketplace this morning a little too compelling to ignore. Indy was fascinated. Are you saying they went along to the marketplace? My hat. I'm going with you. No, I'd better go alone. He's my son. I'm going with you. I know that here I'll ask. Uh, uh, um, uh, les deux. Les deux. Un petit Europe. Europe. No. No. Junior. Avez-vous vos deux enfants comme ça Yeah Où Un roi de rajin, un roi de cicatrice à Aqua, au Snim Khzizim, à la tête de Bion Menina. What Je l'ai dit. Je suis la tête de Sway. Has he seen him What is he saying You can waste no time. Damn it, man, tell me what he said. Don't tell me I'm not coming, Harris. I am going with you. You don't speak the language, you don't know the land. You'd slow me down. Every minute counts. Trust me, it's better that you stay here. Then I'll go to the Sultan. Ask him for help. No, don't alert the Sultan. Henry, word travels fast. If the kidnappers got wind of it, the boys could be in trouble. They'd sooner destroy the evidence than get caught. Oh, my God. Are you saying that they might... Mrs. Jones. <laughs> I showed Indy how to use the makeup. I put the idea in his head. I will never forgive myself if I do not return your son to you. Please, bring him back. I gotta send to this. Be quiet. Don't let them hear you. Maybe if I tell them I'm American, they'll let us go. They would rather kill you so that you will not cause them trouble. Kill me? That's not good. We must hope a good and kind master advisor. I can't be a slave. I'm supposed to be studying Latin. A slave does not need to know Latin. Maybe someone will rescue us. No one knows where we are. We'll have to escape.
سني مزيانين مزيانين بزاف Why does he care about my teeth? Because we have been stolen. What are they going to do with us? Sell us. So we're, we're not rescued? We are still slaves to be sold. We should pray now for a kind master. Now let's see him shoot. Father can walk. Don't worry, tell me the truth. I was sold into slavery when I was born. I never knew my mother or my father. I never get to say goodbye. Ayo, 
your parents really are. Mr. Hurst, are you here to take me to my parents? First, I want you to promise me you will never do anything as foolish as this again. I promise. It's real good to see you. I don't doubt that. That's a wonderful disguise. Look at you. You know, you really have quite a flair for this. How do you know where to find me? Uh, this is the only place left in the country where slaves can still be sold. Come on, we mustn't give your parents waiting any longer. Wait, what about Omar? No, no, it's, it's too risky. We're both in disguise. We have to get out of here. No. He could have left me in wet sand. He came back for me. Indy, Omar is a slave. Wherever he is a slave will make no difference. He's my friend. I won't leave him. I paid 400 real for you. I only have 100 left. That's not enough to buy Omar. We have to try. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, Welcome back. 
Was the Sultan pleased with your lecture, Professor Jones? Absolutely thrilled. <laughs> Thank you for asking. And did you all have a good journey? It was a journey which proved to be educational for everyone. And Omar, did you serve as a good companion to young Henry? Oh, yes, yes, he did. Didn't he, Father? Wasn't Omar just the best companion I've ever had? He did everything I asked him to. Isn't that right, Father? Yes. Yes, that's true. Omar followed Junior's every whim. Very good. Omar, go inside and help with the cleaning. Yes, mistress. Omar, wait! Let me show you all the flowers that have bloomed since your last visit. So... Maybe there'll be another salted head someday. <laughs> I hope you get to be an archaeologist. I hope you get... Well, I, I hope I see you again. Yes. Maybe I could uh, show you the mountains of Switzerland or New Jersey. Or the ocean. Yeah, the ocean. That'd be good. Indy, you have given me dreams to dream. It is not my place to see or to go like you. But now, at least I have dreams. Here. Take this. It is your map. No, I'll just... I'll make another one. Thank you. I must go back to my duties. Indeed. No, no, Omar. Friend, shake hands.